Hi everybody, I'm so excited because we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics and that's advanced analytics. Well, data types and sources, there are like two types of data if you look at it. There's like quantitative and qualitative and both are equally important. I mean, there's more types, but you basically use both types to demonstrate effectiveness, importance, or the value. And at different stages of the business analytics, a huge amount of data is processed and depending on the requirement of the type of analysis, there are five types of analytics. There's descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, prescriptive and cognitive analytics. And technical analysis is a range of techniques that are used to try and forecast future price movements of financial products based on historic price movements and patterns. You find there are things like the foreign exchange market that are really suited to use technical analysis. And economic data or economic statistics are data that's describing an actual economy, the past and the present. So if you look at volume, velocity, variety, veracity, and the value, these are the five keys that make big data a huge business. And at a business level, it can lower costs. It can simplify internal operations. Myself, personally, I come from a trading background and I've created a very profitable trading AI-driven strategy. And it's only been possible because of the use of advanced data analytics with big data. And I started off with Forex trading. And if you look at it, there are three main types of analysis in trading. One is fundamental, another one is technical, and then you have the sentimental. And the fundamental analysis is the process of breaking down the impact of political, economic, and social factors on the relative value of the currency. So through identifying the primary drivers of the currency and its intrinsic value, the participants are then able to craft and form some trading decisions based around that. And essentially, advanced analytics is distinct from traditional descriptive analytics or business intelligence because it applies automation and artificial intelligence to cope with far more complex data sets and to produce deeper insights and predictions. And if you look at some of the benefits, it's really like you can predict the, the future. And organizations can use advanced analytics to be able to act quickly with a greater degree of confidence of the future outcomes. And it's enabling organizations to make data-driven decisions and gain deeper insights on market trends, customer preferences, and key business activities. I mean, you also get it in clinical settings, which could improve, you know, wait, wait times, you know, staffing, give patients more options when scheduling their appointments and receiving treatment and reduce, you know, readmission rates by using population health data to even predict which patients are actually at greatest risk. So it really can help the healthcare sector as well. And if we look at AI and the advanced analytics applications, they have a concrete impact by making it possible to identify hidden patterns, to provide personalized services, you know, learn from the data and make the predictions based on the data and essentially bring the analysis of complex scenarios to simple results. And that really leads to delivering unprecedented value because machine analytics is an entirely different process because machine learning automates the entire data analysis workflow to provide deeper, faster and more Compre comprehensive insights. And you might wonder, how does it really work? Because machine learning is a subset of AI and it leverages algorithms to analyze vast amounts of data. And artificial intelligence is the most leading and advanced form of analytics, which includes machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, and cognitive advisors, which are all AI-based solutions that interact with business users through natural language. And if you look at business intelligence and advanced analytics, it's focusing on improving business decision making, which is so crucial and follow, you know, similar, similar processes, collecting, analyzing the data just to derive the correct insights. And it helps identify 
all the areas where the business is not operating at peak efficiency and aid them to improve the performance of the operations of that business or company. And big data analytics allows to gain insights from performance management measures and matrix that hold the clues to financial viability under risk-based and pay-for-performance contracts. And if we look at it from a trading point of view, from a visual side, you have different types of charts like candle charts, bar charts, line charts, and they created with the same data, the same price data, but they describe the data in such different ways. And a key difference between machine learning and data analytics is in how they using the data. And data analytics is focusing on using data to generate insights, while machine learning focuses on creating and training algorithms through data so that they can function independently without the help of humans. And the big data analytics is it's the use of advanced analytic techniques against very large, diverse, big data sets that include structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. And this from different sources, as well as different sizes. You know, you're talking terabytes to zegabytes, and that's where you have your big data and AI crossing paths. While data science is focusing on finding meaningful correlations between large data sets, data analytics is designed to uncover the specifics of extracted insights. So in other words, data analytics is a branch of data science that focuses on more specific answers to the questions that data science brings forth. So when advanced analytics starts engaging in advanced technologies such as deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, then right there, it's called data science. And data science is focused on studying various forms of existing data to extract useful information and insights. For people working in that area, it can have a lot of repetitive tasks. So data scientists could be spending most of the time doing things that are extremely repeti repetitive, you know, doing things like cleaning and organizing data for analysis. And unfortunately, there are no defined skill sets that can dis distinguish between the roles of a data scientist and a data analyst. And, you know, different companies have different definitions for both of these roles. And there's really a lot of gray area between the two job titles. And let's look at the four Vs of big data from graphics IBM data scientists. You know, they break big data into four dimensions. And that will be volume, variety, velocity, and veracity. And you'll find data analysis is working better when it's focused and having questions in mind that need answers that are based on the existing data. And data science produces broader insights that concentrate on which questions should actually be asked, while big data emphasizes discovering answers to questions that are being asked. And of course, it's true that you can slice and dice data in countless ways and for the purpose of data modeling. It's, it's useful to look at the five fundamental types of data analysis. We have descriptive, diagnostic, inferential, predictive, and prescriptive. Those will be your five. And with business intelligence, you're focusing on reporting and querying and advanced analytics is about optimizing, you know, correlating and predicting the most likely action. And another important distinction is the type of data. And big data has been used in the industry to provide customer insights for transparent and simpler products as well. And this is done by analyzing and predicting the customer's behavior from the data that's derived from things like social media as well. And the big data also allows for better customer retention for even insurance companies. And it's the sort of technology that's created to store, analyze, and to manage bulk data. It's kind of like a macro tool that's created to identify patterns in a kind of chaos of explosion of information in order to design, you know, smart solutions. And it's used in places like medicine, agriculture, 
gambling, you know, environmental protection. And data analysts are relying on skills like programming, you know, being able to query databases and performing statistical analysis. And these skills can be very challenging, but it's totally possible to learn them. You obviously have to have the right mentality and a good plan of action. And if we look at some of the tools that are famous for that, you'll find that people use Excel a lot and they say, you know, they're pretty comfortable with it. And, and it's not always a complete solution, but it's great. You can use different functions to explore the data for better insights. So, you know, you can definitely get your start with Excel spreadsheets and you can see what you can do with data. That's if you're not going deeper into programming and algorithms. And Excel works best for small data and for it has plugins that can handle millions of data and really it has powerful features and at scale i would say that it's an indispensable tool when it comes to data and so if you want to learn data analysis excel is definitely you know the first choice and a good starting point and so just to recap you know some of the types of analytics you know we have our descriptive diagnostic predictive and prescriptive yeah descriptive diagnostic predictive and prescriptive and don't mess up descriptive and prescriptive because <laughs> one is a p and one is a d well thank you for listening if this helped you please comment rate and subscribe watch the rest of the videos and i'll see you in the next one